Last summer, I solo through hiked the John Muir Trail. I was 17 at the time, so in preparation for the trail, I saw it as an extremely lofty goal. I felt confident that I could do it, but it was hard for me to actually visualize doing it, as I had never done anything like it before. I drove up with my dad to Lone Pine, California, visited Whitney Portal, and set out on the trail the next day. During this trek, I hiked from Horseshoe Meadows to Happy Isles. Because I started at Horseshoe Meadows, the 211-mile trail turned into around 240. It took me 17 days, and I averaged just over 14 miles a day. My shortest day was 2 miles, and my longest day was 21. My starting weight was 184 pounds, and my ending weight was 169. My backpack started at 40 pounds and fluctuated around that weight throughout the whole journey. I had three resupply stops, but ended up with way too much food. I also took lots of pictures and even wrote in a journal every night. Here are some pictures from each day and the writing in my journal from every night. I got to my campsite about an hour ago and have just been hanging out here laying in my tent. I left this morning at 8.15 and held a steady pace. The start was the biggest amount of uphill of the day, and it quickly leveled out. I met a little group of people about halfway through. They were two old guys and about a 50-year-old looking woman, and they said, Wow, look at this guy hiking. He's got to be 20 and in the prime of his life. Then I said, Close, but I'm 17. They were all pretty impressed, but I was really impressed by the woman because she was doing the PCT. It's the first day, and I've already met some cool people. Also, my legs hurt. My limiting factor today was energy and mindset, and I got pretty tired. We'll see how many days of this I can get through. Today was pretty great. Not only did it feel easier than yesterday, but I met a lot of people and got trail parents. I still don't know their names, but they camped with me at Rock Creek, and they are really nice. My trail mom even added my contact to a Facebook group so that people could find me and hear about how I was doing if they go on it. They are hiking Whitney tomorrow, and that's the last time I'll see them on this trip. I also made a friend named Teddy, who I talked to for about 15 minutes while taking a break from hiking. He was cool, and he's resupplying at the same place as I am. Sadly, he's going to take about twice as long on the trail as me. I haven't felt very homesick today, and I talked to Justin and Kylie for a little while. The only bad part is that I have a bad headache. I'm excited and a little nervous, even though I know I shouldn't be, to hike Whitney tomorrow. I'm really excited to talk to everyone on the phone now. Hey y'all, I just finished my second day of hiking and it was about 13 miles um, with one pass at the start and then a, it was a good amount of uphill because I'm it's like up by Whitney. Um, but I just got to the best campsite I have ever seen just because of the view and there's a lake and I'm gonna jump in the lake um, but I thought I'd show you guys this view. How cool is that? So, I'm going to be enjoying this today. That last little stretch was kind of a pain, but... That's how it was yesterday, too, so I think that'll be every day, just the afternoon drag. Um, but, yeah, the snow on the mountains is just beautiful. So glad I'm out here doing this. Last night I was thinking, like, why am I doing this? Like, And I was regretting it a lot. Um, just laying in bed thinking, like, I'm homesick, I miss everyone, like, why am I doing this? This is uncomfortable, and... Then this morning when I got on the trail, it was like, okay, I'm really enjoying this. And now that I'm here, I'm really enjoying this. So I'm gonna try to just sit out here for as long as I can without going in my tent um, so that I don't start thinking about that again because that was not fun. Um, you can see it in my sunglasses too, the view. But that's my little update for day two. Thanks for watching. Peace out. I think I'm getting into the swing of things. I summited Whitney today, which is pretty awesome. 
Then, back at Guitar Lake, a guy came over to me and asked if I could do him a huge favor. I agreed, and then he told me that his friend was having a big panic attack and could really just use someone to talk to. I went over to him, and he was shaking. It was like in between a shiver and seizing. When I sat down, he said to his friend, I think I should press it. He was talking about his SOS button on his satellite phone. He asked me, and I said it's his decision, but if he really doesn't feel good, I would press it, because his life is worth more than however much money he'd have to pay for the helicopter to fly in. He pushed it, and it started ringing a bunch. I got to experience what it would be like to be a doctor in the field, because he told me all his symptoms, and I tried to come up with possible issues that were happening and ways to cure it. He told me he took acetazolamide, and I immediately thought he could be allergic. Then he told me he used it a couple weeks ago, and it was fine. Then he told me that he had bad anxiety, and I immediately knew that was playing a major part in his issue. He also said he, could, he doesn't do great with altitude, but I noticed he didn't have any symptoms of altitude sickness. I concluded that it was definitely a panic attack, but it was either caused by the medicine or the altitude. I talked to my mom, and she told me the best thing I could, I could do would be to descend. She was right, and that's what the guys did. However, I caught word back at camp that the guy had gotten airlifted out in a helicopter. So important things I should mention are the guy thought he was going to die when I first saw him, and for a little while I genuinely believed he was going to stop breathing and I'd have to do CPR. His most major symptom was that numbness was spreading from his limbs to his chest, and it was becoming harder and harder for him to breathe. Something I thought was cool about this situation was that I kept my cool the entire time. At some points I thought he would die up there, and I was still calm and collected and managed to make him feel better and become calm. This is what he told me when he saw me on the trail later, and he said he was so unbelievably thankful that I had helped him because he was fearing for his life. Later, I got to camp, and I felt in my zone. I set up my tent, got a mountaineer's pedicure, I rinsed my feet off in the creek, and made my dinner. I'm really tired because today was stressful and the hiking was still pretty hard, but unlike the first and second nights, I'm excited to go to bed. Last night I slept really well, and I woke up at 4.50 a.m. completely well rested. If that doesn't scream through hiker, I don't know what does. Ready for this view? This is down into Lone Pine. Whitney's up there. Not that one, but it's farther back. And this is down the back side. Here's a little fan. Today was a hell of a day. I met a ton of cool people hiked in a group, and am now cowboy camping next to a bunch of snow in a frozen lake at 12,500 feet of elevation. What else could I even ask for? Today was also one of the most challenging days because I extended it by 6 miles and 1,600 feet of elevation gain, but I am really satisfied and I know tomorrow will be easier. One of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen is also happening right now, and I have a front row seat. I'm up here at the base of Forrester Pass, Ton of snow. That's where we're going. Right there. There are these big mountains around it, and that sun is over there. And the, that's a frozen lake right over there. Um, but I met this really cool PCT hiker, um, and he talked me and Teddy, my trail friend. Ugh. Don't have a very clean face. Um, it's the look of a mountain man. Um, he talked us into cowboy camping at 12,500 feet right next to a ton of snow and a frozen lake, which is going to be an experience. Um, today was good, though. Uh, I met a ton of other... PCT hikers and I hiked like with Teddy the whole time and with the rest of the group a good amount too um and I saw a six-year-old no five-year-old PCT hiker which is just absolutely insane there's the moon um I'm really excited to see the stars tonight but so a five-year-old PCT hiker who's who's like doing the whole thing and he did the entire um desert part which is 700 miles um but it's really cool meeting all these people god damn whatever um so yeah 
that's the vlog for tonight. Forrester Pass shouldn't be too hard. I think it, he's, we saw some guy come down in 20 minutes. My teeth look okay. Not too bad. Um, but that'll be fun tomorrow. It's going up there. That shoot. There's some switchbacks, so it's not just straight up. Um, but, yeah. Meeting a lot of people. It's really cool. I think that's one of my favorite parts of this. Like Megan said, it would be. Jesus Christ. That dirty face. Whatever. Okay, that's it. Today was very productive. I hiked 17 miles, went over two passes, and picked up my resupply from my dad. I'm really tired right now, so I'm hoping to make this quick, just like the JMT. After today, I realized I could go very far if I hiked the whole day. I started today at 8.15 and ended at around 6.30. If I can keep up a pace like this, I'll finish this hike a couple days early. Two passes in one day is not it. <sighs> All those switchbacks. Today was just as productive as yesterday, if not more. I went 18 miles and made it over Pincho Pass. This morning was different from all the other mornings, though. I really did not want to get out of my tent. Maybe it was because I was oddly comfortable, and maybe it was because it was cold outside. Either way, I woke up at 6.30 and left the camp at 8. Pardon my French, but I did a shitload of uphill. I went from 8,500 feet to 12,000 in the span of 8 miles. That's 3,500 feet, which is not a small amount when you're wearing a 40-pound pack. Now my feet hurt, but it was definitely worth it. Tonight I'm camping two miles before the campsite I was scheduled to stay at tomorrow, so I basically cut a day out of my schedule already. After two days. I think I can keep this pace up, and I should be able to go very far tomorrow as I hit the top of a pass in four miles and have lots of downhill afterwards. However... After this pass is Muir Pass, which is notorious, notoriously drawn out. Statistically, it won't be as hard as what I did today, and I'll get even more downhill on the backside, but we'll see. I also met a lot of people today, and I decided I would write everyone's name down on a separate note. I'm getting better at hiking. I did 17 miles two days ago, 18 yesterday, and 19 today. I'm also getting worse at getting it ready in the morning. I've never been great at waking up early and packing everything up, but today I woke up at 8.30 and left at like 10. Today was kind of weird, because for the first time this trip, the weather wasn't good. It was very windy, cloudy, and cold, which made me want to go home. I want to do this as fast as possible so I can head home, but my parents can't come down earlier than the 18th. Now that I'm talking it out, I realize that it's not a very big deal, because I could just take a zero day and relax if I get going too fast, and that sounds fine to me. I just really want to go home and see my family and Kylie and the pets and relax for a long, long time. I'm becoming more grateful for how cushy my life is, which I have never really realized like this before. It's really windy out here. Almost lost my hat multiple times. Like, genuinely almost lost it. Like, I felt it coming off and I barely grabbed it. So I'm going to take it off soon, but it's beautiful. We've gone pretty far today. Still have a good amount of distance to go. Maybe like 10 miles left. I went over Mir Pass today, and that was an adventure and a half. It was really sketchy, considering it was covered in snow, and there were literal rivers running under the snow that you couldn't see. So, if I sunk into the snow, I could have drowned in the river. I never think too much about things like this, and my family knows that, but I decided to be smart and stay as far away from the unsafe snow rivers as possible. I think that was the most dangerous thing I have come across on this trip. It was still a fun day, and I took lots of long breaks just to sit down and enjoy the views, which I hadn't done a lot before today. I was also sick of hiking more than 17 miles a day, and I was planning on only doing about 10 today, 
that didn't happen, and I'm pretty sure I did somewhere between 14 and 16 miles. However, it still kind of felt like a rest day, even though I went over the hardest pass on the JMT. Snow makes the hiking more interesting, and I get this excited feeling when I'm hiking with a group through the snow on a pass. It feels like I'm doing Everest, which I am adding to my bucket list. I had teriyaki for chicken, teriyaki chicken for dinner, and it was good, but only had 480 calories in the entire two servings. Disappointing. I'm going up Mirror Pass right now. Oh, I'm so out of breath. The air is really thin, and it's covered in snow. Like, I just hiked up all that. It goes to rocks right there, but after that, it's a ton of snow. <coughs> And it's really, really like, really slanted. See, and I've I've sunk a couple times, like down to like at least my knees. Um, but I just saw. Can you see it in the? Yeah, right there above my head. It's the <laughs> the top of Mirror Hut, which is on the on the pass. So I'm like. Right here. I have like 500 feet. But this was a hell of a pass. Oh my god. This is just what I've been doing the whole time. It's crazy. I didn't expect this much snow. I think if I did, I would have brought um, um, spikes or crampons or whatever. It's like everyone else out here has them. Um, it's not a huge deal, and this isn't, like, that dangerous to me, hiking up this, but down over there, um, by the frozen lake, there were streams under you, and there were some right there, too, but, like, there were streams that went under them, um, and so if you sink, you're just, like, you're done, because it's not even, it's, like, it's, like, full rivers. Today was great. I hiked 12.6 miles downhill and stopped hiking at 2.45 because I saw a cool campsite, and if I had gone three more miles, I would be two days ahead of schedule. I put my sleeping pad up against a tree with the Tyvek under it, and it was really comfy. I sat there for almost two hours and finished the three chapters of Billy Summers that my mom gave me. Then, I planned out the rest of my trip, and even came up with different options that I could choose from. I spent a lot of time perched up against that tree by the river, just listening to the sounds of nature, which I honestly haven't done much on this trip. Everyone has been telling me that I should go slow and soak it all in, but to be honest, that's not why I came out here. I wanted a challenge. When I did those three days where I averaged 18 miles a day, I would finish the day satisfied and proud of how well I had hiked. Today was a good break from that, but I still would rather do extremely challenging days that make me want to cry instead of easily doing downhill days where I only do like 10 miles. Maybe that's just me, but I really like physical challenges, and I came out here to see not only if I could complete the JMT, but how fast I could do it. I know this won't be my last time visiting the Sierras, so I don't see why it's such a big deal that I go slow and see everything. I think I'm learning a lot about myself just by testing my limits, which is what I try to do every day. When I did the 26-mile hike, I just wanted to see if I could do it. I think a major part of my personality is that I'm always setting challenging just setting challenges for myself and testing my limits, and I love doing that. I think that on the second to last day of this through hike, I'm going to go as far as I can. It will be almost all downhill, and I won't have to worry about getting to Happy Isles too late at night. I'm going to wake up at 5, pack everything up, and go. I'm hoping to be able to do 26 miles, but breaking 30 would be legendary. We'll see. Good morning, y'all. I'm just realizing that my nose got a little burnt yesterday in the snow can't see it a ton but it's over there that was mere pass like yeah i was like right there right up there um and now i'm eating breakfast <coughs> eating my oatmeal out of a chicken teriyaki container so every couple bites i like taste the chicken teriyaki and gag a little bit but that's what's been happening this whole time is because I don't want to eat the oatmeal just out of the out of my little pot because then I'll have to clean it. Um, I've been doing this, but it's not it's not very good.
Um, but the sun just came out and it feels so good because it was really cold last night. I didn't sleep very well. Well, today sucked. I got up early and hiked eight miles to Selden Pass and then a good amount down the back. This morning I made four packets of oatmeal, but I couldn't really stomach it, so I ended up eating like five bites. That came back to me later when I felt really lightheaded and thought I was going to faint when I got to my campsite. I did about 21 miles today with at least 5,000 feet of gain, so I accomplished a lot but felt horrible the whole day. Then, when I started boiling my water for dinner, I accidentally knocked it over and the water went everywhere. Luckily, it hadn't been boiling for very long, so it wasn't hot. After that, I spilled the water again, and this time it was boiling. It went all over my feet, and I just couldn't hold it together. The stress of how far I had walked mixed with how horrible I was feeling, mixed with continuously spilling my water, got to me, and I just started crying. I knew I would shed some tears sometime on this trip because it is hard, so I wouldn't really be surprised, but it was really, I was really down in the dumps. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. I guess we'll see. These are some steep switchbacks. Today was so much better. I hiked about two miles to Lake Edison and then got picked up by a little dinghy that I didn't even know was coming. I was just hiking along with this guy named Head First when we saw a group of people on the shore and he said, There's the ferry! We waited for about 20 minutes because the ferry could only hold up to five people and then we rode across the lake. I noticed a lot of tree trunks at the bottom of the lake and where the lake should have been, and that was because it was a man-made lake. All the trees were cut down after a dam was made so that there would be a lake, but thousands of three-foot-tall stumps were left, which made driving over the lake a little scary. When I got to Vermilion Valley Resort, I bought two Sprites, a pack of Swedish fish, a small pack of donuts, and an Almond Joy. I ate them all pretty fast while rereading Billy Summers, the book my mom gave me. However, I didn't eat them as fast as I devoured my double cheeseburger at lunch, which was the best burger I think I've ever had. Today was great. I had a terrific, massive breakfast called the Lumberjack that consisted of scrambled eggs, sausages, bacon, a fat slab of Canadian bacon, two huge pancakes, and a ton of hash browns. The only downside, if you even see it that way, because it was still an exciting experience, was that it was very cold and windy all day. It even snowed. I was excited about having to deal with the weather today, and my new trail friend's dad was teasing me about it. I was just excited because it would be another cool experience, even if it was miserable. It wasn't great, but it was in no way miserable. I kind of turned my legs on autopilot today, which makes me hike faster, but I get bored a lot easier. It's still freezing cold, and my hands are locking up, so I'm going to end it here. I'm on the John Muir Trail, and it's snowing right now. I'm not even kidding. I can feel it. It's not rain. It's snow. <laughs> no. Oh my god. I'm not even that, at that high of elevation, but... You see that? That isn't rain. came out of um, VVR, hiked about 10 miles today, um, now probably 30 now, maybe 4, probably 3, um, and I'm, it's going to be an easy day, but I just had this massive breakfast called the Lumberjack, um, and it was two really big pancakes, a ton of hash browns, but I don't leave the snow ton of hash browns, bunch of eggs, Canadian bacon, sausage, regular bacon, toast. It was humongous and I like barely finished it. It was crazy. Um, and then yesterday I had, uh, I had, I have, oh I had a double cheeseburger for lunch and then a, um, then shepherd's pie for dinner. It was so good. Um, so I weighed myself right when I got to VVR. And I weighed... Oh, so when I started this trip, I was 183. 
Then yesterday when I weighed myself, I was 171, so I lost 12 pounds in like 11 days. Um, and then I weighed myself today um, after eating all that and I had gained six pounds. So I'm still, I've still lost six on this whole trip, but um, I gained six just yesterday. It was a good feeling, so yeah. I'm not having fun out here. Uh, two days ago was a struggle. Cause I just went too far and I was just in a bad mood and I spoiled, I spilled boiling water on myself. Um, but today's a lot better and it's really inspiring me to do stuff like this more often and make this kind of a bigger part of my life. Um, I think I want to learn how to rock climb again and maybe do El Cap. That could be a goal of mine because I'm adding a ton of things to my adventure bucket list including like Everest that's on there now um, the PCT of course and now climbing El Capitan look at the snow it hasn't snowed yet but there's been a ton of snow it's not actually snowing it's been on the ground um, but yeah that's all in the vlog here might pick it up later because I just have a lot to talk about it's good out here being a mountain man. Crazy day today. I got to assist another rescue. This time though, I was there for the whole thing and I was the only one there with this 71 year old woman. It's a long story and I'm tired and cold, but I got to be a part of the whole thing and she got airlifted out and was very thankful for me. I also hiked with John for a while and when I got to the campsite at Red's Meadow, I saw Sequoia again. We talked for a while and I showed him the video of the helicopter taking off. He's a really cool dude. I got to see mom, dad, and Murphy today, which was great. The only bad part was that I really don't feel like hiking anymore, and I want to get off this trail. I only have three more days left, so I'm not going to quit, and the days aren't even that hard. I'm just not really feeling it anymore. Hey guys, um, it's day 14 on the John Muir Trail, and I decided I'd film another video, um, because... I think it's important to have the knowledge of what to do when you lose your spork, which was my one eating utensil that I had. Um, so when I made dinner and was looking for my spork, I couldn't find it. I think I left it um, like two campsites back because I didn't um, cook dinner last night. I just ate like beef jerky and stuff and pop tarts. Um, but when you don't, have your spork, you improvise. I made my spork with my pocket knife out of a stick I found on the ground, and I think it'll work just fine. I'm having home style chicken pot pie, and I camped down over there. There's a lake down there, yeah, you can see it right, like there. Um, camped down over there, I hiked up here just to have a cool view while I'm eating. Um, but behind me is pretty cool too. All that, some snow, not a ton though. Um, I also have a view of Mammoth, which is naked right now. It's right there, I'll zoom in. Uh, I can't zoom in. Um, it's the one that's like brown. Uh, it's got a little bit of snow on it, but it's really weird to see it without a lot of snow. I can see the like building on the top, and then also a couple of the chair lifts, which is really cool. So, I left all my food in 
some stuff out down there, so hopefully bears don't get it. Because I'm venturing into bear country. Um, and I'll be in Yosemite hopefully tomorrow. Like technically in Yosemite. Um, I'll cross over out of the Ansel Adams wilderness and into Yosemite. But I might not make it that far. I didn't go very far today because I was just oddly tired. I actually found out later that I wasn't just tired. I had mono. Um, it's been cold the past few nights and I haven't gotten very good sleep. Like I woke up this morning and I think I got pretty good sleep last night, but I guess not because I'm really tired right now. Um, I woke up this morning with a ton of ice in my tent because like when it's warm and well not warm, but when it's warmer in my tent and cold, really cold outside my tent, um, when I breathe, the like water from my breath uh, collects on the top of my tent, but like on the inside, it's just the condensation from my breath. Um, and that froze and it was falling on me in the middle of the night and in the morning. So it was like it was snowing on me, um, which was really weird. And then my tent was all wet. Um, but I'm looking out over there and it should be a good, good hike tomorrow. If I go, if I push to where I was hoping to camp tomorrow, it'll be a good 22 miles or something. Um, mostly uphill, but not a ton of uphill, like just a, a, slight, a slight uphill for the entire time, which would not be fun, but you got to do it. Um, if not, I'll probably just camp right before Donahue Pass. But I'd like to get over Donahue tomorrow, so I probably will end up doing that. Today was better than expected. I hiked 17 miles, and most of it was uphill. I also crossed my 200-mile mark, which was exciting. To celebrate, I ate all the rest of my salami. This gave me kind of a stomachache, though. I made it over Donahue Pass, which is the last of the seven major passes, I only have two days of hiking left, so I'm going to try to make the best of them. I also thought I hadn't seen the stars enough, so I'm cowboy camping tonight. Hey, y'all. <clears throat> Done a bunch of uphill today, and I can proudly announce that in two miles, I will have done 200 miles. Um, not just of the JMT, but like, and, and I don't mean like in general, obviously I've done more than that, but, uh, but from Cottonwood... And just on this trip, I've done 198 miles now. So, two more. Will be 200. And I'm celebrating with my salami that I was having for lunch, but I'm eating a lot of it now to celebrate. With this this view, it's, it's alright. Not horrible. Um, there's a really cool view back at Garnett Lake. I took a lot of pictures, um, and that one had just a ton of snow-topped peaks. But Thousand Island Lake is right next to me. I'll take some cool pictures of that. I just want to get over Donahue, and I'm gonna today, which is pretty. I'm pretty glad about that because that was the plan. But it's been a lot of uphill the past two days, and I've just been tired for some reason. I haven't been sleeping too well either. Um, so, it's looking good. Yeah. So that's the update for day 15. I think it's 15. Probably 15. Which means I will have done 17 days when I finish. And I was planning on 18 days. So I cut out a day. Probably cut out a couple more. Um, I could have, but... Uh, the resupplies didn't really match up, so it's all right. Still pushed myself a lot to cut out a single day. So I don't know what the average was, 240 in 17 days. I'll, I'll calculate that right now, but that's my, that's my day 15 vlog. Um, this is going to be the, my last like the the elevation I get to today at Donahue Pass is the highest it's going to be for the rest of the trail. It's just above 11,000. 
Um, and then it's going to be just basically flat and downhill after that because I go down to like 4,000. Um, yeah. So that's, that's that. It was really cold this morning, but it warmed up and it feels really good just sitting here. It's like melting in the sun. I'm really enjoying it. It's going to be hard to get back up. All right. Tonight is my last night out here. I went 19 miles today, and although it was mostly flat and downhill, my legs are hurting. Lyle Canyon was beautiful, and I stopped for lunch in Tuolumne Meadows. There was a general store there that had everything. I got a prepackaged generic egg salad sandwich, an It's It, and a Sprite. This was delicious. I then decided I had enough time to go back in and get more food, so I got a box of Cheez-Its and Breath Savers. Breath Savers are the best mint out there. They taste even better than Life Savers, and they don't have any sugar. They're amazing. Tomorrow I'm going to hike into Yosemite Valley, and that'll be the end of my journey. I'm excited to be done with it so I can go relax and eat whatever food I want and not have to hike a bunch every day and sleep on the ground. However, I think I'll want to be back out here in about a week. Hey, y'all. Woke up about 20 minutes ago. Um, put away all my sleeping stuff. I was camped right down there where all my stuff is. Right in front of that. So that was cool. Now I'm just enjoying my oatmeal with my homemade fork because I lost my spork um, it's doing the job it's just a little harder with oatmeal because I don't have a spoon um, but just looking out at all the views I only have two days left and then I get to go home and ugh, <clears throat> enjoy all the comforts of life back home, uh, pull back at the condo in Mammoth, which won't be fun. Um, I'm just really excited for all the food. It's going to be great. I started a list of all the food I miss that I'm going to have when I get back. Ugh, really stuffy nose. And for some reason, what I've been missing the most is the Black Forest Gummy Bears. Not the Haribo ones, because those ones, I think they've gotten worse. Honestly, they taste too waxy. But the Black Forest ones are so good. And so I'm going to get those when I get back. And it's like a super long list. Um, but, yeah. I didn't do a journal entry for this day, but I thought I'd tell you all how it went and talk a little bit more about the John Muir Trail as a whole. My dad hiked from Tuolumne Meadows to meet me at Cathedral Lake, and then we hiked down to Happy Isles. We took a different route than the John Muir Trail, though, and we hit Clouds Rest and the Mist Trail. We found my mom in Yosemite Valley and drove back to a condo in Mammoth Lakes, where I expected to regain my energy and start feeling normal again. This didn't happen, and I got tested for mono after a few days. It was positive. Anyways, the John Muir Trail was the best adventure I've ever been on, and it subjected me to so many things that are important in the real world. Responsibility, perseverance, hard work, and the ability to thrive by myself are all major takeaways that I still feel over a year later. I recommend everyone try an adventure like this at some point in their lives. I was lucky enough to have that opportunity at only 17.